Alright, welcome to what for me at least are the nine most underrated, completely free to acquire champions in Rage Shadow Legends. And where better to begin than good old Physics the Unbowed, who was released in a little bit of a deficient state, has since been buffed up, and of course, because it's Plarium, for some reason they didn't reset her in-game ratings. Some of her ratings are doing a good job at slowly catching up over time. People are acknowledging that Physics is very, very solid into Hydra, but things like Fire Knight, a very, very deficient faction wars is for some reason a 4.4. Um, and of course, these in-game ratings do not count Doom Tower bosses as well, which she is fantastic in too. Now, it's probably a good time to mention, if you feel like I miss any free champs that are super, super underrated on this list, make sure to throw them down in the comments down below. But Physics, man, she's got a double hitter A1. Each hit has a 100% chance of decreasing the target's 10 meter by 15%, except this is actually 10 meter steel, right? Fill this champion's 10 meter equal to the amount the target loses. Very, very good indeed. Excellent into Fire Knight. It's a double hitter, so she can break down the shield. It's also 10 meter reduction, which is great. 10 meter steel, even better. Very, very nice. This is great into Scarab King as well in Doom Tower, right? Where you want to control that 10 meter as much as you possibly can. Um, same as Dark Fair, you know. 10 meter control, great stuff. The A2 is an attack all enemies with 100% chance of placing strong version of decreased speed for two turns. This is great basically everywhere, but again, especially into Dark Fair. Uh, Scarab King, Hydra, obviously, also places a strong ally protection buff on all allies as well. So, yeah, insane survivability across your entire team. Very, very important debuffs. Great A1. What's going on with the A3? Attack all enemies, place a provoke debuff for one turn, and shield physics for 20% of our max HP for two turns. Um, yeah, and that's where the provoke for the Hydra comes in. So, she just does a lot, right? She gets a lot done. I'm like a month and a half away from getting my hands on Vizix myself on this account. I can't wait, man. I'm definitely going to be building this champ out. And I can only imagine for like the purely free to play players out there, dude, grabbing Vizix, especially when you consider you've got like multiple Hydra teams to build out. Oh my God. It's such a, it's such an underrated champ, really. I don't know why Plarium don't reset the reviews. Uh, on these champs from time to time. The next champ we're going to be covering is actually not a champ at all, but it's a type of champions, again, especially for newer players and free-to-play players to be looking out for, and it's going to be the likes of Deanna Gloompiercer. Not because Deanna Gloompiercer is like some kind of sleeper OP, account-changing, giga chat of a champion. Not quite. It's because she's a fragment champion in an ongoing fusion. From my experience, whenever these monthly fusions come by, right, you get all of these component champions, which in this case, Diana, you'll be fusing her into Thor for this month's fusion. They tend to just be a little bit underrated. People get very, very focused on the fusion champion themselves. Not many people actually end up building out the component champions in these fusions. And to be honest, if you're a free-to-play player especially and you're not able to get the fusions done, dude, just get your hands on as many fragments as you can and you might as well fuse the component champions. Nine times out of ten, they're always a little bit underrated, man. Deanna is great. If you're lacking a nuka, right, if your account's in its like first six months or something, you don't have a nuka for your Sylvan Watchers faction, She's a really, really solid pickup, man. The A3 in particular is great. Attack all enemies before attacking, get an increased crit rate buff and increased crit damage buff on this champion for two turns. So she's bringing the self buffs. If this attack kills an enemy, place a veil buff on all allies for one turn. So a bit of extra survivability. But the important thing is you can build her with 70% crit rate and put the rest of those stats into just raw damage. She also brings an ally attack on her A2, which can help you out into the likes of Fire Knight and a double hitter uh, with the chance of placing strong version of decreased defense for a couple of turns on each hit. So very, very solid indeed. And look at that. She doesn't even take that many skill books either. Actually, it's like, what, three or four skill books for every skill? That's really not bad, man. Again, especially if you are free to play. Another example of a champion like this is good old both the Rancid, and I think his reviews are starting to catch up to where he really is. He was rated like 4.3 or something for Hydra. Like, what the hell, dude? For a completely free to acquire champion um, in, of course, a previous fusion at this point, he gets to remove two random debuffs from all allies and heal them for 10% of the max HP on a three turn cooldown. On his A3, he brings a decreased accuracy debuff and increase the duration of all ally buffs for one turn on an AoE A2. Like, just very, very solid for a completely free to acquire champ. And, um, yeah. Just don't sleep on those good old component champions, man. Next up, we are heading into the Barbarians faction for a champ that I'm currently collecting fragments for. It is, of course, the good old clan shop fragment, Yakal the Scourge. Honestly, I think his ratings are pretty good overall. They're quite fair. What I will say is that he's criminally underrated 
in Fire Knight's castle because this review system is so bad, by the way. It doesn't even include hard mode Fire Knight's castle, which has, of course, the unique mechanics of basically your freezes, your freeze champions become extremely, extremely important, right? What does Yakal bring? Would you know it? A double hitter on his A1 with a 50% chance on each hit of placing a freeze debuff for one. Also not included in the review system is of course the Dark Fear boss in Doom Tower where he is very very good as well. Attack all enemies on his A3, smack with the skill, 75% chance of placing that freeze debuff for 1 turn. And then of course once you've nuked down all of the mirror images against the Dark Fear you want to take care of the boss's turn meter? No problem man. On his A2 it's an attack 1 enemy, 100% chance booked of placing a decreased speed debuff for 3 turns and a chance of placing another freeze by the way but also steals 100% of the target's 10 meter and plays an increased speed buff on this champion for three turns too. So he brings a little bit of that 10 meter control action as well on a three turn. Yakal the Scourge, mostly underrated in Fire Knight, but I think he's worth a mention, man. He's a good egg. And to be honest, I'm going to cover both of these picks as well in the Barbarians faction because I'm, I'm just going to wrap them both up into one that I'd say that more veteran players are likely to um, underrate these champs, whereas I think newer players actually don't underrate these champs and know how useful they can be. Um, good old Scylla of the Drakes. I feel like a lot of more veteran players look at Scylla of the Drakes and think, ah, you know, she brings a single target revive. Uh, she's got like, what, a double hitter AoE A2 that has a chance to play stun. How useful is that into many areas of the game? How useful is that into certain bosses and stuff, you know? Um, her healing's pretty good. I think that most players would accept that, but more veteran players would say that Scylla of the Drakes has been power gripped. For me, by the time you get Seal of the Drakes, like you're six months in, chances are as a newer player you've maybe got one, if any, revivers built out. Like you've just got other priorities to focus on, right? Building dungeon teams and stuff like that. Revivers are kind of at a premium at that time where you get Seal of the Drakes. You're probably lacking decent healers as well unless you start off your account with the beginner promo link down below at the top of the video description, in which case you start off your account with Tagore and Rector Drath, in which case, hell, maybe you don't need Silo the Drakes, man, because our beginner promo link gives you all kinds of sweet, awesome support champions and is by far the best possible way to create your new shiny alt raid Shadow Legends account if you're looking to start off a second raid adventure, but I digress. I think Sil is just good everywhere is the point I want to make, especially if you're a free-to-play player. Like, oh my god, I can't imagine neglecting building out Sill. Another champ, the 30-day login reward champion. I won't spend too long on Hikatoon. You all know it, you all love her, right? I see I see quite a lot of people actually not taking Hikatoon up to level 60. I think she's awesome. I'm only now, like, seven months in, starting to get to a place where I'm starting to, like, filter her out of uh, some of my teams, but she still gives a lot of use in things like Faction Wars and stuff like that, and I would never regret taking this champ up to 60. And now the time has come for a controversial one, man. Oh god, I almost don't even want to cover Quintus th the Triumphant, dude. Look at how many reviews he has. You guys can't see, because my massive swollen head is in the way. He has 320 reviews, dude. And let's check these reviews out, man. Most of them are around the full range. Uh, where is he in Hydra? A 4.1 in Hydra, which is kind of crazy as hell, but he's kind of underrated in everything across the board. The guy smacks. He does crazy, crazy damage. The way his A1 functions, I believe, well, it's an attack one enemy, place an extra hit if the target has no buffs. If this attack is critical, repeat the attack once. I believe, therefore, it's a quadruple hitter. Please do correct me, by the way, if I'm uh, if I'm wrong about that. From what I've seen from him in like all the YouTube videos, unless this skill was changed, uh, I think it's a quadruple hitter. And the guy absolutely hits like a truck. He's an immense Hydra damage dealer. He is technically free to play. Now, the big caveat with Quintus tr the Triumphant is that you can only get him by absolutely blasting uh, in live arena. And who blasts in live arena? It's like 5% of players or something. If the, like the stats I've read are to be believed, like 5% of players even play live arena. And just heading into the live arena milestone rewards real quick, you'll see you just actually pick up like Quintus fragments as you go, but that really doesn't mean anything, right? Basically, you get Quintus when you hit 4,000 like power or milestone or rating or whatever the hell you want to call it, you know? It's a hell of a grind. Getting there is not easy. And maybe just by the time you get him, he's not good. There's actually a couple of champs I'm going to cover towards the end of the video that are kind of like that. They're very, very, very powerful champions, but you just get them too late in the sort of uh, rewards calendar that by the time you get them, they're not actually upgrading anything on your account for most players. You know, there's going to be some exceptions to the rule, of course, but 
that said, I think it is without a doubt that Quintus is. Like, I get why he's rated kind of crap. People are just annoyed, and rightfully so, that he's at the end of such a long and arduous rewards track in one of the um, most universally neglected areas of the game. Maybe only competed with by Siege. But is he a 4.1 out of 5 Hydra damage dealer? You know, probably not, right? Then again, what the hell do I know? You know, I've been playing the game for seven months. He seems underrated to me. He seems like he smacks like crazy. If we lived in a hypothetical world where Quintus was pullable from Shards, for example, or he was like a 90-day login reward champion, would his ratings look like this? I'd say probably not. That said, I understand why people, you know, are underwhelmed by the guy. Perhaps by the time you get him. Now, from a controversial pick to, I don't know, like, as far as I could tell, this might actually be the most underrated champion in all of Raid Shadow Legends. And it is the third hard mode Doom Tower secret room fragment reward in Gomlock Skyhide, who released as a piece of crap. Look at the state of these ratings, dude. Oh my god. Like, you think that this is literally just, I mean, dude, there are, like, common champions with better ratings than this. That's crazy as hell, you know? <laughs> so why is he so, so, why, dude, why is he so, so underrated? His kit has been buffed up. He's a Giga Chad. He's an absolute Dark Fae counter uh, at this point as well. And he's one of the only champs in the game that I've seen with such a powerful skill on his A2 on a two turn cooldown booked. This is unbelievable, man. So let's just check out his kit real quick. On the A1, attacks one enemy, has a 75% chance of placing Leech Diva for two turns. Also has a 75% chance of placing Leech for two turns on two random enemies if this champ has full HP. So his A1 actually spreads a lot of Leech effects. Pretty good. The A2, here we go. Attacks one enemy, has a 100% chance booked of stealing all buffs from the target. Also has a 100% chance of stealing 50% of the target's max 10 meter on a 210 cooldown bucked. Oh my god. This guy could, it just deletes anything where 10 meter control is a thing. And then in the A3, it gets even better. Attack all enemies two times each hit. 100% chance bucked of placing a strong decrease defense debuff on all enemies for two turns. The first hit on each target also has a 100% chance of decreasing the target's 10 meter by 10%. The second hit on each target has a chance of placing a weaken debuff uh, for two turns if this champ has full HP. I mean, it's just crazy as hell. It's obviously unbelievable against all wave content as well. It is only bookable down to a 410 cooldown, but does that matter that much when you're stealing 10 meter so often with the A2? I'd say not. Um, yeah, he's obviously pretty solid into a couple of areas of the game. Dak is the one that comes to mind uh, most for me. Seems pretty damn great. And yeah, these are his reviews, man. Oh god, it's crazy. Why did Fire not reset the goddamn in-game reviews when the Oh god, forget it, man. Forget it. Let's just move on, dude. Now, sticking with the Orcs faction, dude, we gotta talk about Val, man. This is one of the later rewards in Doom Tower Hard Secret Rooms. And I think this is another one of those champs. Actually, the last couple of champs we're gonna cover. Another one of those champs that's obviously very, very good. Like a lot of people would put Val as like an A plus or S tier Hydra damage dealer. Very, very solid indeed, mostly because of his passive, which we will read out in just a sec. But you just get him too late in the game, such that he just doesn't make that much of a splash on your account. And oh my god, look at these. Look at these goddamn ratings, dude. It's kind of curious how the rating system works, but there it is. Anyways, his passive, which I will read first, increases this champion's attack by 10% each time they use an active skill, stacks up to 100%, resets each round, doesn't matter into Hydra, it's all one big round, right? Meaning that you basically just get to double his damage as the Hydra goes on. You know, these super long fights, he really, really excels. He's got a very, very simple A1. The A2 is an attack all enemies with a chance of placing weaken and strong decrease attack debuff for a couple of turns on enemies who receive the weaken debuff. So good debuffs to bring. And on the A3, it's an attack one enemy with a, oh, will actually just ignore 30% of the target's defense, destroys target's max HP as well. Um, yeah, good modifiers on this. It absolutely smacks, but to be honest, when you've got a passive like this, everything absolutely smacks. He's an extremely, extremely good Hydra Damage Dealer. Hell Hades uh, actually has him at like a five-star Hydra Damage Dealer. Just one of the best going in the game. But you just get it, like, you just get him on your account at a point where, I don't know, you've probably already got three Hydra teams up and running and ticking and building them out might, may or may not, give you an upgrade to your Hydra Damage at that point. Does that make sense? So I, I feel like the reviews are really, really dented as a result of that and oh my god some of these are just 
inexcusably bad, man. And the final champ I gotta touch on, which by the way, this champion released when I was seriously a brand new player. You know, I still consider myself fairly new to the game, to be honest. Seven months in, there's a lot to learn, you know. Um, but I'd been playing Raid for like a month or so. And then uh, Carnage. I learned about Carnage, man. I was like, bro, this guy looks insane. And I was reading his kit. I was like, wait a minute. Mythical champion, what does that mean? Oh, they get to transform. I was like, I was like wide-eyed with wonder at this. He has two sets of skills. What is this man? Attack all enemies, ignore shield buffs. He seems so, so goddamn overpowered, man. Like, what the hell is this? And then I check the reviews. I'm like, oh, does he, does he just suck? But no, man, again... Again, this is another one of those champs that just takes so long. I mean, the, the guy's only got 74 reviews. 74 reviews, right? Um, and so by the time you're getting him, he's just not making that big of a splash in your account. He's, of course, from the uh, hard mode Cursed City and just blasting the hell out of that for an extended period of time. Frankly, I'm a billion light years away. But yeah, it's just so funny to me. The way that the reviews work in the game, you know, people are people are just angry because they wanted more at the time. Because, like, only super, super late game players are getting this guy and they're just not impressed by him. So he has, like, worse reviews than Lemure, for example. Let's take Lemure, man, this random uncommon champion. Look at the goddamn reviews on Lemure, dude. He's clearly a better champion than Carnage, man. Anyway, I think that, I, I, I think it's hilarious. Anyways, so some of those picks are justifiably underrated in a way. It's almost like a protest review bomb, I guess, on a champion because people aren't happy with how long it takes you to get a champ. But those are my picks anyways for the, was that eight or nine? It was about nine-ish of the most underrated, technically free to acquire champions in the game. Let's be real, Carnage. I mean, can you consider him free to play in the same way that Hikatoon's free to play? I don't know. That's kind of debatable. But I tell you what, champ is free to acquire. Good old Tagore and Rekta Draft. If you sign up to raid using my promo link down below <laughs> at the top of the video description, man, you'll get to go once the account hits level 15. Wrecked Draft at account level 25, and it's one of the best beginner promo links going. Just make sure that if you sign up on PC, that you do so after signing out of Plarium Play. Very, very important that you create a brand new Plarium ID with a fresh email address and stuff like that when setting up a new alt account, just to ensure that you get all of the rewards from that promo link. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. I'm going to catch all of you all just a tad bit later, man.